Hello. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to implement Lightbox into your HTML document. Now, Lightbox is a simple way for you to display your images in a nice um, gallery, link them together, increase the size, make them look nice and aesthetic. So, for example, if you go onto the website I've created, if you go onto Events, here you can see I've used Lightbox. So the images displayed as normal in a sort of gallery order. Hover over them, it creates a nice effect. That's done through some simple CSS. The light box features when you actually click on the image itself. So it enlarges it to a greater scale, so you get a better, clearer image. But then also you can use the arrows alongside it to click through and just go through the different images you've got at hand. Now this is all easily done with a simple bit of CSS, incorporate some HTML and a tiny bit of JavaScript and jQuery. Which I'll show you how to do it now. So to start off with, if you go onto your Dreamweaver, now this is a simple um, HTML document I've just created. It doesn't consist of much really, and you know, all it has is a nav bar. Um, I've got my CSS style sheets all linked up, um, and it's included some images in a separate div class. Just over here, then I've got my footer obviously as well, and my JScript, which is just simply used in my nav bar itself, so I can all be ignored. Now, I haven't included anything at the moment for light, um, light box to work. So what I'll do now is show you the simple steps one by one as how to do it. So to start off with, what we need to do is go and get the actual scripts themselves. So to do that, you need to go to the Lightbox website. So if you go to this web address just here, and once you get to the website, what you need to do is click the download. Click download, save file, great. I'm going to open it up. So inside the file, Lightbox 2 Master, go into that folder. We have a load of different files and other folders. So all we really need is to go into dist, and it's these ones here will be need. So inside CSS, we need Lightbox. That's it. We don't need Lightbox at the moment, it's just Lightbox. So if you go inside Lightbox, start off with, copy all the documents, control C, and we can close it down. So once we've got that, go back onto Dreamweaver. And all we're going to do is place it inside its own independent CSS file. So to do that, if you don't know already, I'm going to go File, New, CSS. Mine's already clicked just there. Create. Great. Remove this comment. I'll do it in the CSS document. And then simply, it's already on your clipboard, so Control V, paste it in. And there we go a load of CSS across for us. So now we're going to want to save that and remember to save it in the actual root folder. So if you haven't already make sure your site is set up as mine is here on the right hand side so you can see the different items I've got set up already, HTML documents etc etc. So file, save as and then make sure you're saving it in your root. So mine's already selected to my root so it's on my D drive and this here is my root folder. So I'd go into my CSS and I'd actually save it as Lightbox. But as you can already see, I've already got it saved as that, so I'm not going to. All you would do is save it as Lightbox as the dot CSS. That's it. That's all you need to do, and it's here as a Lightbox um, CSS file. So once you've done that, make note of what you saved that CSS file as. Because what we need to do now is link it to our um, HTML documents with a style sheet. So your style sheets should always be linked at the top of your page, which should be the first items to load in. So to link that style sheet, go to the top, just like mine is here, inside your head, nice and simple, link, href equals, and then it tells me to browse, so I'll do that. So it's CSS when I go to, Lightbox CSS. And you can go rel equals style sheet. Great. And save it. So as the first step, we've got the CSS all linked up. Second step is getting our JavaScript on there. Now, for JavaScript to work, you'll have to have a jQuery. All the jQuery does is um, basically interprets the JavaScript and makes it work. 
So to get your jQuery, what you'll need to go and do is head over to this website here. So you need to go to developers.google.com. And once on this, all it is is a URL link we're going to include. So you'll start off at the top of this page, just keep on scrolling down until you see it pops up saying jQuery in this one here. There's different versions. You always hit the latest one, so let's go for this here. So we can just do just copy that line of code. Control C and take it back to Dreamweaver inside your HTML document and paste it in here. But when you're pasting your jQuery, you need to make sure it's pasted above your JavaScript. As the jQuery needs to be read first before the JavaScript, otherwise it won't load. So I already got some J, um, JavaScript set up here. All I'm going to do to make it easier for myself in the future is do a little comment and say below this line is jQuery. Just make it easier in the future. It's nice and clear where the jQuery is. Great, just like so. If you've got OCD like me, you'll want to make sure it's nice and evenly spaced. Great. So inside here, paste your jQuery, and that's it. Control S to save it, and you know there's no red lines, and it's all working fine. So great, we've got the jQuery in place. Now let's go and get the JavaScript. So the JavaScript is already downloaded in that file we got earlier. So if you go back to your files, go back, we still want to stay inside the disk document itself, or the disk folder, and now go into JavaScript. So all we want is that one right there. So same as again before, we should open it up through Notepad. All you do is Control A, Control C, control and close it down. Go back to your Dreamweaver, and then File, New, and then you want to go for JavaScript, Create. Once again, blank JavaScript document. So below that, and Control V, paste in that script. There we go. Nice and easy. The same process as before, we're going to make sure it's saved inside our root so it can actually be read and received by all the files, otherwise it's going to be pointless doing it. Save as, and this is the important part: is making sure you save it to me and remember. So always make sure you're saving documents the same sort of um, caps lock sensitivity. So if you're not going to use a capital letters throughout the whole um, all in one file, make sure it's on the rest of the files exactly the same. You never use a caps lock or never use a capital letter. Um, so you go into your JavaScript folder, and as you can see, you've actually got a lightbox saved. So that's all you'd save it as is lightbox. And .js saves the JavaScript file, and that's it. Done. You've saved it. Now, I'm not going to save it yet again because I've already done it. So I'm going to cancel. Close that down. But you've just saved the JavaScript file. Now we need to link it to our HTML document. So if you can't um, see where this is going. It's exactly the same as the CSS one, but practically. But rather than doing um, link href, all we're going to do. Is as you can see down here on this different JavaScript I've got script source and equals where the location is and closed off another script. It's nice and easy. But make sure yet again it's below your jQuery. So script. Oops. Source equals JavaScript lightbox. And you can go ahead and close it off. Done. There we go. Save it to make sure there's no red lines, and we're all good. There's that one sorted. So now we've done the CSS, we've included that, we've included the jQuery, which simply reads the JavaScript, and we put the JavaScript in place. It's practically everything. So what we need to do now is take those images from the zip folder we downloaded earlier, and save them inside our root folder. So go to your downloads where the zip folder was. Locate the actual image folder, so dist, images, then grab all these images, control A, control C, and then go to your root folder. 
inside root folder you should have three different folders already set up CSS, images and JavaScript and then all the HTMLs so inside your images paste them in so control V I've already done it so I'm not going to repaste them and as you can see that's one there for example that's one and that's one and then there's also another one just at the previous that's so all you need to do and then click close once they're in your root folder ok so now we've got all the code in place ready for us to use Lightbox but to do that you need to first create yourself two separate images inside the HTML file like I have here I have one image and then a second image and next you simply enclose these images inside an A tag an A tag and reference those images to the actual Lightbox itself so to do the following we open up a tag we call it A and we do a href so we reference it to an image. So that image I just referenced it to is the actual original image which was on the CS, which was on the HTML file, as you can see here. So portraits gallery 11, portraits gallery 11. So we can reference it to the same image we're actually closing up inside the A tag. Next, the data lightbox equals. I'm going to call this one portraits. and close it off. When I close it off it gives me um, a complete closing off of the A tag line by putting in the forward slash A. We don't need that part just yet so delete that. And just below the image you can place in the A tag closing there. That's it. That's how you set up white box. So all I've done, I've referenced the image which I've already created just there. So portraits gallery 11, portraits gallery 11 then I instantiated data light box by simply writing data light box and then I actually named the type of gallery I want to have so I've called the gallery portraits so now what that will do is it will only allow me to click next on the images which are also inside that portraits gallery so for example we do exactly the same process for the next image now a tag picture equals so browse and find that original image the image is called gallery 9 Portraits Gallery 9. I'm going to call it Portraits exactly the same. That's going to create a gallery and light box to choose images from. I'm going to close off the tag below the image. And save the file. Great. So now if we're going to preview this HTML document, so go to the file location, tutorial, double click it, it should open up in Firefox. And one of the whole hover over, it's a good indication it's working, is that the hand cursor appearing. So now let's cut the images and it opens up a light box. And then let's see if the portraits gallery is working. If I click that, it should take us to the next image with the next image only, which we link the portraits to. And it does. If you followed all the steps I've given you, you should now find that your light box is working. The only difference being, you might find it might look slightly different to mine, because mine on my web page, my images are smaller, and when I click the light box image, it enlarges it. For yours, you might find the image is exactly the same size no matter if you click it. All it does is open up on a separate layer. Now, to accomplish the whole enlarging of the image, what you need to do is create a class inside your image tag, like I have here. So I have image, and then it goes into class, landscape, one. That's it. So all this class here is doing is making a link to my CSS file, where I've created a new rule. And that rule being, it makes the original image which sits on the HTML page smaller than the um, actual image size. It doesn't change the dimensions of the image inside the file, we just sets it so when the web page loads, it loads it to a smaller scale. So I'll show you. So if I go to my main CSS file and it finds the rule being portraits one, which is just here, you can see any image or anything which is defined inside portraits one gets this rule. So the rule being it gives it a height of 300 pixels and a width of 283 pixels. So let me go back and show you how that works on the web page. So this part here, or this image you can see, is actually inside the code being 
image or that line there. When I click on the image, it opens up the ATAG href to Lightbox being this section here. So this section is the size of the original image, but this section is the original image scaled down, which I've done inside my CSS. So, if you reference a class inside your image and edit that class so it resizes the dimensions of the image, you have to have the same display as mine. So the image loading on the page is smaller, and when you click the um, image, it opens up the light box and enlarges it to its original size, giving it some sort of scale. Great, that is all the steps needed to create Lightbox. I hope you've enjoyed everything, and I hope it will be as thorough as possible. Until next time.